Alright, as I wrote this, uh, Ubisoft went ahead and dropped the Year 8 preview video for what's coming in Year 8. We'll go over that in a minute, but if you don't know what these videos are, basically they're where I just talk about certain things. In this video in particular, we're talking about what I want to see in Year 8 of Frona. Firstly, let's talk about what happened in Year 7 of Frona, because there were some big changes. So first off, from Year 7, Reflex Guard is gone. All the heroes that had Reflex Guard have been swapped out for Static Guard. Secondly, uh, there's a performance mode in Frona now. You can pause to read us all, but basically you get more resolution or more frames out your console now. Pause the video if you want to read it all through. If not, I'll leave a link to the patch notes below in the description, so if you want to read through it, go ahead. Bash speeds have been improved, and they're now quicker. I believe they're between 433 and 466 standard for all bashes. We also got two new heroes. Ocelotto, an Outlander, and a new Viking hero, the v v Vangarian Guard. I'm pretty sure I'm fucking up that name. I just call her VG for short, man. We also got four, or technically five, hero skins this year. We got the Pirate, War Mummy, Highlander, uh, Shaolin, and technically Zonhu. He technically had a hero fest. Uh, he technically had a hero skin, if you would call it that. I don't know why they didn't just make it into a proper hero skin. I mean, you can't really customise it, so fuck it. We also got some Tessan Grounds this year that came with some new reworks for Lawboy, uh, Highlander, Medjai, Nusha, Peacekeeper. Uh, some of these are now live. Lawboy is now live. Highlander and Medjai are apparently coming next season, and Nusha and PK are most likely going back into the Tessan Grounds. I believe that was everything in Year 7, but overall, pretty solid year. Now, that being said, I'm going to discuss the video first, and then we'll go into what I want to see done in Year 8, kind of like my uh, wish list, basically. So as, as I was like putting this video together, uh, Frona came out with a Year 8 preview video, I guess? Let's give that a watch. Uh, Okay, that's pretty cool. We have 35 million players already now. Could do some more advertisements for this game, but as it is. Okay, cool. So, uh, four seasons again as normal, and we're getting themed ones from basically every faction except from Wulin. <laughs> Ubisoft really keeping the train up of uh, fuck Wulin, aren't they? But yeah, this looks pretty good. Hold up, was that? Legacy Pass. Okay, that's, that's cool. Let's see what this is about. Oh yeah, okay. So basically, um, you know Battle Passes, they started making them year 8? No, year 4 they added Battle Passes to uh, the game. They're finally re-adding the old Battle Passes back into the game. From what I remember, they they were talking about it the way, um, if you own the Battle Pass, you'll get it back. Like when, you, uh, when the new season starts, so kind of like a one-for-one -one situation, so... If you, when year eight starts, you get year eight season one battle pass, but you also unlock year four season one battle pass as well. It's kind of like how that's going to work. But if you already locked it back then, you'll lock it again. And the added bonus is it's going to be refitted to all the new heroes as well. Yep. Okay, can we not, can we talk about how fucking cool this looks? JC with a sword. Why is he not, a, why is he not a Frona skin in the game? Like he'll, he'll be a fucking amazing hero skin. Imagine it was like Yormagander or Shigoki. That would be amazing. Converted maps. Ah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, this has been mentioned before, but we're getting two converted maps. It's supposedly Cathedral and The Mill. That is the rumour at the moment. And they're coming out season one, and I, I'm going to take a guess and say season three, because you know, they're, they're the only seasons that don't have heroes in them. New heroes. What are they? I am so excited about the heroes that are coming to Frauner in year eight. The first will be a samurai in the middle of season two. Oh. The second will be an outlander in the middle of season four. Okay, that's... Yeah. I was a bit surprised at that, to be honest. I didn't think samurai will get another hero. I I generally was going to believe it was going to be outlanders and Wulin from now on. Uh... I just hope they're not fucking hybrid heroes, man. Like, I think on behalf of everyone, we are sick of hybrid heroes. Just give us Vanguard or Assassin or Heavy Heroes from now on. Never make another hybrid hero again. We are burnt out of those fuckers. Hero skins. Okay, what have we got here? Is that supposed to be a teaser for your Maganda? Okay, so four skins. I'm pretty sure she says there's five. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's five. There's actually five skins, but I ha from their tone and what they've already talked about, it sounds a lot like we're going to get six hero skins this uh, this year. 
We're getting two knights in the first season. We're getting the samurai one in season two along with its new hero. Season three is Vikings. And I think there will be another hero skin there, which I imagine will be Outlanders, if I had to take an educated guess. And then the last one is Wu Lin, which will come out probably this time next year, if I had to take a guess. Or around it. Well, that's pretty much it. Let's have a look here. Okay, so you can see here, season one, Knight's theme starts literally two... Not, not even two weeks away. About a week and a half away. New hero skin. Get a new map. Entire update 2. So we're looking at late April, early May for the new map. And the second hero skin. So you got another hero skin coming in season 2. Which is going to be samurai themed. Yeah, the whole thing's going to be samurai themed. Season 3 will be Vikings, of course. Uh, this, is, this is actually interesting. They've blocked out what's coming in tile update 1. Which I will imagine is the new... Either the new... It'll be a 6th undisclosed hero skin or potentially something bigger not to jump to any conclusions but this could be where they add something like cross progression into the game they could keep this completely you know under wraps until then and we won't know about it until of course september but i i i want to say it's going to be cross progression but in my heart i know it's most likely going to just be another hero skin i could be wrong but fuck it we ball of course we've got the halloween themed uh it's going to be Viking based, which is going to be interesting, really. I don't think... Do Vikings even celebrate Halloween or have something similar to that? But we're interested to see what they do. And of course, you've got Season 4, Outlander themed. New Outlander hero and uh, hero skin for the Wulin, which are... Apparently, that Outlander is going to be an evil bastard. Like, he's going to be someone who's 100% into the Holocaust shit, which would be very interesting to see what they pick. But yeah, that's pretty much the uh, preview, basically. Uh... They'll talk probably in depth about this more in the Warriors Den, which happens... What's the date today? If I can get this video out by the 7th, it'll be out uh, later when this video comes out. And we'll uh, get more information about this in the Warriors Den on the 7th. But yeah, let's uh, continue with my video for now. So, my wish list for Year 8. Now, I'm not expecting anything massively game-changing, but I think cross-progression in Season 3 is a possibility. With them hiding the what's coming in tile update 1 for season 3, usually when they hide something like that, it's usually something on the line like a big change, like some sort of core experience change. So it is possible that cross progression will come and that's one of the biggest things on my list that I want for year 8 because it's the only thing I can think of that is holding Throner back realistically. So mark my balls. If cross progression comes in season 3, I'll eat a can of beans on fucking stream and if not, I'll pour them over my head. But with that out of the way, uh, let's go on to the other stuff that are on my wish list. I would like it if Rona was, was to go free to play. I think Rona is in a great state as it is right now, despite what people have been saying. It is a 10 times better than what it was what it was from years ago when it first came out. And the only thing that's stopping people from giving it a try, realistically, is that initial uh, price tag for the game. Sure, the game does go on sale every now and then, and you can get it for very cheap, but I don't know, I think making it free to play and pushing the game out with ads and advertisements would, you know, massively give us a massive influx of uh, new players, which is something we desperately need right now with the tanking viewership of For Honor. Going into the whole advertisement thing, this game needs to go do more sponsorships with content creators or something, or just push out a bunch of advertisements on, you know, YouTube and shit, because uh, For Honor is at its lowest viewpoint I think it's ever had. And a lot of it comes down to the fact that there is no, no one, there's no single content creator pushing the game out in the algorithm on YouTube or Twitch. You know, I think the closest we have in terms, well, the closest we had in terms of a massive YouTuber covering this game was Zanny, but he stopped doing videos for this like a year ago. And ever since then, it's been slowly declining in viewership. I'm not trying to blame Zanny here or anything like that, but when small games like this lose their biggest content creator covering it, it does affect the algorithm in the YouTube uh, scene. So I think the easy way to counteract this was to have Ubisoft either do a bunch of sponsorships with some massive content creators or just push this game out with a bunch of advertisements on YouTube or something like that and just get more people interested in the word out about this game. Because like I said, I think For Honor is in a brilliant state it is right now, especially for a newer player. Like we've got a ton of improvements to the game. We've got cross-play, we've got unframed... Uh, 
uncapped frame rate. Literally, we've got pretty much everything at this point now that we need. We have all the heroes that are viable for, for the first time probably ever. That you can honestly say that all the heroes in this game are viable in fours. But yeah, that's that's one of the what's one of the main three things that I think that this game is in dire need of. Moving on to the more uh nuanced things. I think it's long overdue that the feats get looked at. I, I, I don't have to explain certain feats to uh, the people that play this game, you know, Oathbreaker, Juggernaut, Spearstorm, Kite, Scream, uh, Ninja Stars, whatever the fuck you call them. Yeah, they're, they're all borderline broken feats that need to be addressed, and they've been long overdue for a revamp or a rework or something like that. I, I am thinking of just making a separate video on this, on how I would rebalance feats and... Uh, perks in this game because i could literally go here for the next 20 minutes and just tell you tell you exactly why <laughs> what what needs to be changed in feats and perks in this game but uh yeah that's another thing perks some of the perks in this game are still broken like ventral barrier still has a bug where you can get an overshield if you get revenge like more than twice or t two times or some shit that ne that needs to be addressed because that shit's annoying and also there are some perks in this game that are stupidly strong and then there's some perks that are completely fucking useless like um what is it called uh aegis shields up gale storm uh was it rabian rebounds they are fucking borderline useless in the in this game and i feel like it's long overdue that we get some changes on the perks or you know balance changes buffs nurse whatever you want to call it moving on from that the next one on is more playlists I think there should be a permanent game mode which just contains all the previous events into one playlist so you can literally go into the playlist and play one of however many events there have been in the past like the Assassin's Creed event, the Prince of Persia event, Death Metal, all those events are thrown into one playlist that you can play into the game and it's a permanent game mode like you could literally replace tribute with this game mode. It's just something to like mix up, uh, mix up the gameplay. Because at the moment, the only get viable game mode at the moment is D uh, Dominion, and that can get quite stale sometimes. Moving on from that, limited time stuff. I am not a fan of that shit. I get why they do it because you know they want to pressure people into buying steel packs and that. But I, I, I don't. I, don't, I think Thrawn is at a point where. We don't need limited time shit anymore. I I think year eight they should start bringing back some of the limited time you know effects, executions, emotes, all that bullshit, and start bringing them back and putting them p permanently into the. Is it a store technically? I, I don't know what the fuck the term would be for the where you uh, buy all that shit. But yeah, I think it's about time we made that all permanent instead of having this stupid limited time shit. I get why we don't get the th Christmas theme and the Halloween th theme stuff. That's fine. That can that can stay where it is. But the other stuff, just make it permanent, UB. Stop fucking with us. Up next, testing grounds and reworks in general. Although the reworks from last year have been fairly decent, especially in the last one with Medjai and Highlander, I feel like the testing grounds itself is in dire need of a change. My first idea is to make the entire test and ground week double xp so people you know have more interest in playing it that rather than the first two hours and then it going dead secondly make it so test and grounds uh gets an update every two to three days so let's say day one of test and grounds peacekeeper's in there she gets a bash it's 500 milliseconds after a couple of days we give the devs the feedback and then after the third day they change that bash and speed it up you know that sort of thing and so it's it's for that whole week we're actually fully using it and change adding small tweaks to the character to see what they play like i think it also help if we get a test and grounds each tile update so we get one in the beginning of tile update one for the season and then the uh, the next tile update in the mid season we also get a test and grounds kind of like speed up how we get hero reworks done because there's not many reworks left i think off the top of my head it's mainly pk nusha nobusi warlord and warden that i can think of off the top of my head that are in dire need of a rework everyone else kind of just needs tweaks really i mean Medjai and highlanders test and ground went pretty well and I, I imagine they're going to be coming to live build but yeah there's not there's really not that many heroes left that are in dire need of a major re uh, overhaul but that was my idea of testing grounds and how i would how would i would change it up all right um something i forgot off the list that i just remembered revenge for the love of god ubisoft please rework revenge it is in dire need of a major change off the top of my head some of the things I think it needs is to heal you when you activate it so you're not on, you know, one HP when you come out of it. Two, 
make you immune to guard breaks, and three, make give you superior armor throughout the entire duration so you can actually fight off, you know, your attackers. Because, Jesus Christ, yeah. It does not take a lot. I think it takes on average eight heavies to kill someone in revenge. Like, it... It just needs a massive buff, Yubi, and I think it's long overdue that you finally delivered on that. Following on that, uh, new heroes. I'm okay with them sticking to two heroes a year, but I would like it if they would give us two additional unique executions w with the new hero that comes out. So we get six unique executions to serve the standard four. Just something to mix it up, because, uh, you know, you when you're playing a new hero and you only have four unique executions, it can get quite tiresome seeing them over and over and over again so i would like to see a bit more variety in the execution department from that other than that you know i have no problem with them doing only two a year because i'll be honest i i, I do not think they have the budget for uh <laughs> for this game anymore but something that i think could be in the budget would be hero skins i we we've already been confirmed that we're getting five potentially six this year i would like it where we get hero skins every tile update so two skins a season and the best the best part about the hero skins is you don't always have to f play them with the front of fantasy type thing you can you know take inspiration from other genres games like imagine a dead by daylight co uh, conqueror skin or a assassin's creed peacekeeper skin maybe a jc uh Yormo shigoki skin uh, or a far cry vars inspired zerka skin like you know, you can have quite a lot of fun with these hero skins. You don't have to keep them in the fantasy genre that is For Honor. You can expand your horizon for Ubisoft because we would fucking buy it, shit. Like, as long as it looks good, we'll buy it. All right, going into the uh, minor things now that I would like to see get addressed or worked on this year. Ranked in general uh, is a dog shit system. It is a, is a dog shit game mode. I think we all could agree there. The only thing I could suggest is just up in the rewards. So we, we get guaranteed rewards after every completion of a match. Like you get an ornament, pattern, all that bollocks. You get one of everything. Win or lose. Because I, I think people are just fed up with just grinding out, you know, that one specific ordinance and then never getting it because the RNG loot is just so bad for it. That's pretty much all I can think of, of fixing rank because, yeah, rank doesn't really belong in For Honor, in my opinion, which... Uh, <laughs> Gonna sound even dumber when I bring up the next point, which is ranked Dominion, or technically a comp version of Dominion. You know how in uh, competitive Frona, well, Pro League Frona, technically, uh, they have a comp version of Dominion. I would like to see that get added to the main game, either as a, its own ranked thing or just competitive dom uh, Dominion. Of course, with all the competitive settings, so uh, I think well, this is one of the main settings is single pick heroes and uh, shorter time. I think I think the other main thing is with competitive playlists. But yeah, I think that would be an idea. I think that would be nice to mix things up and you know keep all the people that keep bitching about single pick being added to the game or needs to be added because. I'm going to be honest, if single pick ever gets added to this game permanently for Domi just regular Dominion, this game would be dead within a year because I, I would lose a lot of interest in playing it. <laughs> All right. And then finally, the last one I got on my list was the orders. Uh, you know, the, you know how these orders work. A lot of them are just dog shit. Like you need you be you need to like give us more rewards for doing these things, especially some of them, because some of them are just so tedious. Like, I think doubling the rewards you get from them would be a good start. A second thing you should look at is taking out some of the tedious ones. So like, instead of 12 matches of Vanguard, just put in 12 matches in general, or eight matches in general, or instead of 20 uh, captures in Dominion, you have 10 captures, because that's more reasonable. You can do that in probably two games. You know, just make them less tedious and reward more rewarding. That's pretty much what I want to see done with the orders. Yeah, that is about it. Uh, oh, I was talking a while there. I've, that's all I've got on my list at the moment. I probably missed a few things out that other people would pick up on. But yeah, give me your thoughts below. What do you think Foreigner needs in year 8 and maybe beyond year 8? I would still like to see this game get more, you know, updates. Because I plan on covering this game throughout year 8 and the following, uh, and the next few years after. Because, hey, I still have fun with this game somehow after four years that I've been playing. But yeah, other than that, cheers for watching. I will see you in the next one. If you haven't been paying attention, then uh, this whole month I'm basically just doing a bunch of uwu videos first to just try and get the bulk of them off. But I'm planning on making a Hogwarts videos this this month, probably within a week or two from now. But I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.